that it's difficult to sustain if you don't develop some intelligence how can maintain your position in Krishna consciousness just by making that noise. But they are such a deal, you say. Prabhupada opening projects for them. <laughs> you know. You know. So they just, you know, he said like the farms. He said one cannot even respect a very boy living on a high Krishna farm will change sixteen years. But he must work. If he doesn't work, don't give him anything to eat. <laughs> simple rule. No work, no food. <laughs> so that's a pretty simple equation. Can you imagine what the people Prabhupada had to work with and what he saw there happening? And still there's another feature of Prabhupada. He gave people the dignity back. You never felt rejected or uh, <coughs> ridiculed in front of Prabhupada. He did it sometimes to tease the movies in a humorous way, to expose his stupidity. <coughs> but he was not done in a mood to tear you down. I remember, you know, we had such a dialogue man in Germany. <laughs> his name was uh, Ulk Raumar. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm speaking about, I'm speaking of God, is actually moments after Prabhupada departure. You know, return to some of the institutions. But, uh, you know, but uh, <coughs> uh, because those days, the, you know, there was no training, no discrimination, anybody coming into the door, you know, Prabhupada, Kijai! Oh, yeah, oh, great! You know, go on something! <laughs> that was, you know, there was nothing of this, you know, Prabhu, and could you please roll the Kundagov, and Prabhu, please, can you clean the toilet? No, Sanket, go out immediately. Out. What is wrong with him? You will find him. Get out. <laughs> they call the next, like my first devotee who brought me on the street. His name was, his name was Ramohan. You know, he just got me in a van. I was three days in a temple. You know, first day I joined. Uh, 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 uh. You know, the next day they shaved me up. I gave him my orange curtain dhoti. And then the third day, Ramohan came, some woman. Uh, he was, I remember him big, he was just a small little round head. Yeah, he was, he never talked much. And then my temple president, Hans Tutra, and all the GBCs and all times, they said, Hey, there's a new one, get him on. So he said, We go on Sankirtan. And I said, What is it? And he said, uh, Look at me, he said, Can you drive a car? And I said, Yeah. I have very good license. Very good. Drive the car. And then he put me in a car and we drove like 500 kilometers or something. You know, I just kept on driving and driving and I was thinking, why are we driving? And then we stopped the car and he said, So now we go out? I said, Go out in what? He said, I thought I would just be a driver for Krishna. I'm the driver. And he said, He was laughing. He said, His famous mantra was, Come on, that's not the way, you know, come on. And as I was always saying, no, he's come on, you know. And he said, of course, it's a distributor. And I said, how? Oh, what? Me? Me, I will drive and distribute? You know, for me, I was like, wow. <laughs> so that's how my Sangitan day started. When we came back, the temple president came down and he asked, how was the new one? He said, hey, you were pretty good. He had a big smile. He had only four teeth in the nose or something. He had a big smile and he said, Hey, he's a Sankita devotee. And that was the end for the next 15 years. I hardly saw it until. You know, I was mostly spending my time in events. So, you know, that was the way to do it. And Urukram, oh my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was a kleptoman. He was stealing all the time. He was what? Kleptoman. He liked to distribute in a shopping house all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's very difficult. Nobody could do that. Because there's, there was not even much cameras in those days in the shopping mall. But there's guards at that event. You know, it's full of people. And there's this, this, this you know, you go in a shopping house and try to distribute it's ridiculous. People are always absorbed in buying something and paying something. You know, all the whole thing is in a shopping house. It's never caught. And in the evening he emerged. I mean, he could do it like 40 books in one day in a shopping mall. 
bought him books in London. He was a little, little guy, I mean, he looked very weird. <coughs> and he just came to the car, you know, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare And I said, <laughs> so how was it? I was good, 40 books. Then he opened his Sankita bag and he was full. <laughs> You know, it was full of all kinds of stuff spread it out, you know. And I looked at this and I was going, oh, God, please. I knew that by that time the man is a disease. He's like, he has to steal, otherwise he's not happy. So I told him, my only preaching to him, can you at least not steal something reasonable? <laughs> something he can use. What are you going to do with lady nylon socks? <laughs> you know, yeah. And he said, well, this is my size, I can use it. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> he was standing there and somebody in a temple, you know, with white, uh, no, actually, he had all suffer and dolly. And he had this black nylon, you know, <laughs> lady, you know, underwear, you know, and he was horrible, horrible. <laughs> what a guy, you know. He could steal like five alarm clocks in one day. <coughs> we don't need any alarm clock anymore, damn it. <laughs> Besides that, you know, we were so trained with Brahmacharis, I was from, I, you know, I never used alarm clock. Actually, I don't use alarm clock even until today. I, I do wake up the time I want to wake up when I don't and I'm sick. I don't function. But I, for years, I had no alarm clock. I just went to sleep and I said I want to wake up three and went up. That's, you know, that was normal. We didn't know it. And he always bought his alarm clocks. What are you going to do with alarm clocks? Come on. What are you going to do with a lady face cream? I mean, you know? He said, no, it's good for me down by, you know? You can, you can put your cream on me down by. You can put it in me down by. I said, all the time. So when Prabhupada visited Germany, just to give you an idea how terrible Prabhupada was, German Yatra was in a state, you could say, half terrorism. Sankitan was doing very good. We just got a big castle, which made the audience incredibly puffed up. We didn't board it, we just rented it. Real castle. You know, so everybody was like, ah! Every Yatra, those days, somewhere in Europe, every Yatra or every country had to have a castle. There was castles coming up everywhere. You know, in France, there was two castles. <laughs> and, you know, and then the North, or finally Germany made it also, so we actually had also a castle. So, you know, and then shortly after, we closed all the small preaching centers and had a big castle. Like I heard you read the book, German, you know, we find it all there. So we centered everything in one place in the castle, which is not a very smart thing to do. And then, <coughs> and then we moved into the castle and then two weeks later, Papa was arriving. It was hilarious and the thing was just, you know, the, the place was a mess, you know. So we couldn't renovate anything, so we just bought a whole truck full of colors, you know, and we just painted anything that comes in the <laughs> We painted the staircase, and we painted the walls, and the rooms, and the bathroom, instead of putting ceramic, we just painted it, you know, <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the bathroom color or something like that. I was painting the bathroom, you know, it was still oil, oily color, which was sticky, it must have been still sticky in brow It couldn't dry. I would have just painted. It's a total marathon. They would have completely covered in paint. The paint, you know. And they were sometimes standing on a lettuce that was in the castle with a big hole and a staircase, you know. So you couldn't reach all these corners. So we were standing on different devices over each other. One was day and night. One was painting over the other, you know. And the other got all the color on her hand. And it was like painting, painting like nuts. And then finally, Prabhupada right? So that's a whole story to it, how what happened, but I remember that lecture when Prabhupada gave that lecture. They built me the of Prabhupada. It's very simple. And I remember it was a very simple. It got, you know, the sides were like for chickens. It was just like a you know, wood plank with some, you know, something in it. And then they made a big cushions. Actually the whole Yasasam disappeared in cushions. You know, it was like this rose with a huge and and they put Prabhupada in it, and I noticed when they put him in it that the side viewing was like <laughs> falling out, you know. So I was like, oh, this, this whole thing will not collapse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prabhupada gave a lecture. 
And then he asked for questions and answers. The first hand which came up was Urukan. Oh no! I mean, it was all the way, they hit him always, all the way in the back. <laughs> because fools dash in that the angels don't dare. But the crazy people, they usually recognize a crazy person by a complete absence of shame. They have no shame. They just come and say, So Krishna, I'm here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I had a girl knocking midnight on my window here. I'm here! So I opened the window and said, Me too! And then I closed the window. You know, <laughs> so it's just crazy. Who is knocking on somebody's window at midnight, saying, I'm here? <laughs> People have this idea. Temple is something you can just use more or less like a public toilet. You just go there, you're in it, and you go again. It's for Krishna. It's a wrong idea. It's nice, it's recorded for internet. It's a wrong idea. Temple is Krishna's, and this is the embassy of Srila Prabhupada, of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And Srila Prabhupada himself stated that in this embassy there will be no lazies and no crazy. Now somebody say, yeah, but we are all a little bit crazy. That's fine, as long as we admit that, and we can work on the problem, and we exhibit our reality to the authority of Srila Prabhupada, and try to cooperate. So, follow this instruction, otherwise how can we cooperate? And then, it's going to be okay, somewhat okay, lunacy. I mean, embassy. Even in the embassy, it's a noise in Czech embassy. Those come not compete in normal day either, you know? You know, you couldn't say that all people in Czech Republic are like that. You know, but it was, at least nobody was trying to bite you and, you know, and, and nobody was going, oh, I am the president of the Czech Republic. It's me. You know, that picture of the president on the wall, it was recognized. That's like the founder, Acharya. And uh, that's, that's the system here. They had a system, okay? But some of the people come here in the door and they say, no system. I saw Krishna yesterday. Hey, mm -hmm, I can do any damn thing I want. I can talk whatever I want. You know, I saw Krishna feeling in my bones. Here he is. You know, Krishna and me, we are fine. Well, it's stated in the scriptures. So, so and then they get upset. I mean, you want to tell me not to do? No, I'm just introducing you to something Prabhupada said we should do. Ah, that's your opinion. We don't have an opinion. There's no opinion. As a matter of fact, if somebody exercises any sort of authority in Krishna consciousness, that he will make sure that he has an authority. Otherwise, he cannot exercise any authority. It's called parampara. So, people, someone it comes to spiritual life, they think, oh. Now, how did Sri Prabhupada transfer these hippies who were acting exactly like that? You know, asking him, like, whenever I chant, there is a light over my head. Prabhupada said, keep on chanting, it will be switched off. You know, how did he actually such a lunatics? How did he transfer them in minimum time? In a disciplined, parampara following disciples? Oh, that question we are asking ourselves until today. Because it became visible after Shri Prabhupada's departure, how difficult this is. How difficult it is for Western people. And even Prabhupada himself complained. He said, one of the reasons why in India preaching is so easy is because people are inclined for authority. Even foolish ones. <laughs> even stupid ones. But here the Westerners, it doesn't matter what kind of authority. They was go, ah, show me. Why? I don't feel like I I don't know, I have to think about it, but I don't think it's all. I, I don't I disagree. It's always this mood. You can't tell anybody anything. And this was the qualification of the first followers of Sri Prabhupada. They just shut up. And how did Prabhupada command it, not demand it? but commanded such a high level of faith, well, you have to be very, very pure for that. And Krishna helped, as I described before, 
by giving this confused hippies the idea, hey, here you surrender and listen, unconditionally, just listen. And just because they did that, the Prabhupada gave them instructions which were way beyond their ability, or even, even ability to understand what to speak of doing. The Prabhupada is not possible. Prabhupada said, impossible? That's a word in a fool's dictionary. You don't have such a word in our dictionary, impossible. Because for Krishna, everything is possible. With this faith, the devotees were going in countries, there was never Krishna consciousness spread. They were risking their lives. They were just doing incredibly, you know, impossible things. Sometimes with such ease. Because Krishna was there. So we should not limit ourselves with our mind. No, I can only do that. No, I, uh, you know, then Krishna was okay. This is what you say. Then keep on doing them in your case. It's a real question of even demons. Like Sriman, Mr. Hitler. He had a vision, he will take over the world. Well, he can pretty far with that kind of idea, you know. I mean, it was getting a little bit scary. <laughs> even in America, they were thinking, hey, 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 he will come over here. And when you look at Germany, coming from a completely defeated and destroyed state, and within a few years, threatening the whole world. That's how dangerous Germans are. <laughs> because of one reason. An absolute disciplined loyalty towards the leader. Who was actually an unrecognized artist. Now you have to be empowered for that. It's a blessing. Now I don't know if the deities they got the blessing from them. We are not worshipping these deities. There's deities for everything. <laughs> Even to become a demon, there's deities also. We have example in Krishna book, there was a certain gentleman who tried to please Lord Shiva by cutting flesh from his body and offering it to Lord Shiva. That your worship also does exist. <laughs> you know, so there were worshippers too. They also believe that there's a power floating through them. And they did. <laughs> to destroy so much. In a relatively small time, you have to be empowered. <laughs> so, if it's possible for a demon, don't you think Krishna cannot give us a little bit more of this? Some power just to please him? But Krishna wants to know it. You really want to please me. So, what this, what this devotees did, they gave up this self meaning in a sense of false ego absorbed ideas. How do I feel? What do I think? And uh, what do I consider? Ooh, ooh, you know, they give it up. Prabhupada said, do it, let's do it. It was all, all completely pioneer days. Prabhupada said, today will be initiation, they got initiated. He said, today will be marriage, they will marriage. And then he said, today I think you should take sannyas, you took sannyas. And then he said, I think you should go to China and preach, and you went to China and preach. Why? I just imagine somebody tells you tomorrow, no, you should go to China, please. It's very important. You would think just, just not even about to preach, but you would think to China. Well, yeah. You know? No, this devotees were just the only question is how do you get to China? That's all. You know? This was the Lord. And uh, don't you think Krishna is not cannot be uh, grateful? He goes to China. He doesn't mind him if he gets killed or not. And Prabhupada had the all right to say it because he did it himself. His travel to America was a, from a material point of view an absolutely suicidal mission. No return. He could have died on the ship and that's it. They would dump the body in the ocean and that's it. That would be the end of that mission. Prabhupada didn't mind. At least he was thinking, I will die on. Mm. Performing my duty. That's all. So the more and more we meditate about this, the more happy our lives become because the less and less we will consider our own well being, which actually doesn't produce very much because we cannot satisfy ourselves, neither individually or congregationally. 
It's not only also widely spread this idea that first you have to be happy devotee, then you can preach. So make yourself happy. How? Well, uh, have friends with devotees. Oh, come, I'm now your friend. So that's nice. So let's chant Hare Krishna together. That's even nicer. Right? But don't you listen what you are chanting? There's a translation to the Hare Krishna mantra, you know? Krishna, please engage me in your devotional service. What about if Krishna does that? And he will send you a spiritual master who will guide you in devotional service. No, uh, that's too much. I just want to be together with my friends and feel good about it. And we will help each other. How? Why did they be just together? So, what? How? What about if your friend tomorrow dies? An extreme example. Or what about if something happens to him? Can you prevent it? No. You cannot. You stay right away in Shastra. Nobody can help anybody in this material world. You can only help people to be connected to Krishna. He can help. And that means in practical sense being connected to Śrīla Prabhupāda's mission. That we do something together to satisfy Krishna and Prabhupāda. And then, oh, then we can help each other. Because Krishna will help us. Otherwise, individually, what can we help? Can we prevent even Prabhupāda sometimes say, I cannot stop you from leaving. If Krishna cannot stop you, what can I do? Prabhupāda did feel sometimes help. And he prayed, Krishna, please bring him back. And Krishna did. <laughs> he arranged a special treatment for the soul. He got so smacked in the nose. He came back again. <laughs> and Prabhupada was going, it's nice, you are back again. It's very nice. He didn't even ask how it was. We didn't ask him why he did it. <laughs> he just knew it must have been very unpleasant, otherwise he wouldn't come back. But why to go to such a setting? Why to go to such a treatment? Why to make it so difficult for Krishna? Okay. There's some comments or questions there? Well, I'm saying we, like, Krishna, he can, uh, he can facilitate our, like, big goals. Why, why to go for this, this, this yes. goal yeah. instead of this? But, also, isn't, isn't it that our, our common goal is to please Prabhupada and please Krishna, of course. So but that's the big thing. That's the big, big thing. But also, there are so many different ideas of how and where yeah, and well, when. That's, uh, that's the so then we all go like... Yeah, yeah, then we all go like this, right? Why? Because you don't have a spiritual master. Mm -hmm. That's what the spiritual master is for. To simplify our life and say, Yes, 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 this is also there, but for you right now, focus on this. And that's what, what you can get easy idea when you read Prabhupada's letters or something like this, how he individually guided the bodies in individual projects and trusted them with individual responsibilities. You know, uh, that's, you know, those very particular instructions they got. You do this. So you don't... Uh, you know, there's so many things, yeah. Let's say in the beginning you just get the overview, but preferably under the spiritual master, then we have no authority. Authority has a function to simplify life, not to complicate.